12 years ago, The Amazing Spider-Man by Mark Webb, starring Andrew Garfield, released. I do not remember my personal thoughts on the film at the time, but I do know I went to see it in theaters. Over the years, my thoughts have changed on Andrew's Spider-Man, but now, of course, we're in 2024, and Sony decided to fuck around and re-release every Spider-Man movie, because Madam Webb sucked, but we don't talk about that. That shit's crap! So far I've reviewed Spider-Man 1, not gonna lie I'm probably not gonna go in order, like Spider-Man 2, 3, then Tazam 1, etc. I was gonna go in order, but honestly man, like, the Raimi movies get enough praise, Andrew films do not get enough praise, and I'm not gonna be like super biased in this review, but I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of on the bandwagon of Andrew is the worst Spider-Man when I was younger, Bandwagoner. but like I said, over the years I've actually started to like him more and realize his movies aren't as terrible as people make them out to be. There's some good quality and charm to these movies obviously you know these are flawed movies but they're still good nonetheless well the amazing spider-man anyway ties them to we'll get to that when we get to it but for now we're going to be reviewing the amazing spider-man in 2024 after we watching it in theaters so let's get straight into it as i said in my last review and will continue to say when i'm making these i'm just using random b-roll footage so there's going to be footage from other films but i'll show the relevant scene i'm talking about when necessary first thing i have to say is holy fuck i love this title sequence it's awesome kind of similar to Raimi but you know it's a little different it's dope though now one thing i'm gonna say is the first act can be rough at times because compared to Raimi, the pace can be slow and there's kind of a lot of important stuff that leads into multiple things if that makes sense but sometimes you know there's some maybe not so necessary things in between so you know bear with me for act one after act one though the movie gets so good i promise anyway we start off with peter as a child and we essentially see peter and his parents why am i getting chills dead ass this gives me chills. It did in theaters when I saw it as well. But yeah, this is such a sad scene. We start off the movie with Pete's parents abandoning him because of some Oscorp stuff, which isn't explained until later in the movie or maybe the next one or both. But this franchise includes the quote unquote untold story of Peter Parker's parents, which I mean, like it kind of is untold because they never really even told us much of the story in the comics or maybe they have and I forgot, but yeah. Pete is too young to understand what's going on and they didn't explain it to him at all. They just left, you know, and it's just really sad. We transition into high school Peter and first thing we get is Flash being a douchebag to Pete, which is typical and we see pete has a skateboard this is different and he kind of seems like he's cool but like he's really not you know he's more of like a loner anti-social kind of nerd who just is awkward but also doesn't really give a fuck which is pretty much me so that's why i relate to him heavy now and i've started to really love andrew's iteration because like you know like he's the outsider he's the loner maybe even the weird kid or whatever right to me toby is more like wallflower nerd rather than weird loner kid but i think both can fit peter parker well i guess people maybe relate more to the nerdy type though then it seems like this kind of cute girl is trying to do something with him the whole time she just wants pictures of my boyfriend's car i just you know i really want to frame a good one for his birthday that's really nice of you wow that's just a nice thought no bitches the old, uh, the old Bro did not check his schedule for that thought. Moving on though, we see Gwen Stacy and this looks crazy as hell because Pete just comes out the random cut taking a photo of her. This does seem weird, but I don't know. Toby did this in his movie too, so like same shit. Nonetheless, Flash is bullying some nerd as per usual. So Pete decides to step in and calls him Eugene. You what? Which every got everybody like, oh shit, world star. But Flash is like, oh hell no, nah. <laughs> fuck this dumbass kid. I'm knocking your shit. It fucks Peter up in front of everybody. Flash is acting all tough guy until Gwen Stacy comes around and is like, oh yeah, we, we still doing that tutoring? Cause you're fucking dumb and you're failing your classes? Huh, yeah, well, what about that homework, buddy? Yeah, get to class. Fucking stupid ass, dumb ass, retarded bitch. And just humbles the fuck out of him, which he deserved that for sure. But oh my God, finally. Finally, holy fucking shit, bro. Emma Stone is so bad, bro. I had to get this out of the way. Like, I would worship the ground she walks on. You caught me a 4K? You got me. <laughs> 
Not for real. Fuck Kirsten Dunst and Zendaya. I'm an Emma Stone simp. I'ma just keep it a thousand with y'all. But enough Emma Stone simping. Back to the review. Gwen is just concerned for Pete, making sure he didn't get a concussion, and this scene is so good. Their chemistry is fucking amazing. I'm telling you, bro. She's just kind of like flirty, like, yeah, I just want to make sure you're good. I know your name. I just want to make sure you know your name. It's so cute, because like, she cares. It's obvious, right? A little later, we're introduced to Aunt May and Ben parker and i don't know i think they have a good relationship it's established aunt may and both uncle ben work i kind of like them in this movie actually because i feel like we have a little more insight into their relationship versus spider-man 1 because we kind of see more scenes in this movie compared to spider-man 1 because you know obviously ben just died quickly in that movie but we get a scene between ben and peter showing how smart peter is where ben thinks they have a flood from the condenser tray but pete is like too much water for the condenser tray or the heat exchange tubing this has got to be the fill line whatever that is that's the only thing that makes any sense. And Ben's like, how does the other guy look? Because he knows somebody punched Pete, whereas he told Aunt May he fell, but Ben knows because, you know, he's not stupid. Which is, like, semi-important for something that happens later in the movie. Due to this flood in the basement, though, Pete finds his dad's old messenger bag thingy because, you know, they're salvaging valuable stuff from the basement. When he comes upstairs with it, Aunt May and Ben are shook like they saw a fucking ghost. They're kind of just like, oh shit, we forgot about that. And here is where it's revealed that Pete Pete's dad worked with this guy and he seems significant considering, you know, it's a picture of Pete's dad and this guy next to his dad in his bag and, you know, he wanted this bag kept safe by Ben and May. So, you know, it must have some significance, but Pete wears the glasses he found in his dad's bag. He also sees a random Oscorp file, but Ben wants to talk to Pete, so Pete unlocks his door. Yo, can we give this Peter some motherfucking credit? That shit is fire. I need some shit like this. This is smooth as fuck. This is just another other way showing this peter is super smart bro's able to lock and unlock his door without even having to get up come on that's hard but ben came to talk to pete and essentially he's like yeah that guy i know him he's kurt connors he worked with your dad for years until your dad disappeared but he never called or we never seen him since your dad left then casually ben is just like she's pretty referring to Gwen on his computer this is like semi-important for later or not like that important but it kind of sets up something funny later so Pete researches Connors finds out he works at Oscorp so Pete goes there steals an internship badge to sneak in now this may kind of seem out of character a little bit but we do have to realize slash remember Peter has not become Spider-Man yet okay and before he becomes Spider-Man he is irresponsible so for now this technically is in character so he goes to this internship group come to find out oh shit Gwen and Stacy works at Oscorp and is the head intern of Dr. Connors and Pete's like what the fuck did I just get myself into? When the baddie you're in love with happens to be the head intern of the person you researched because that person was close to your now dead father? How the fuck do I explain this? So my boy you feel me just keeps his head low for now up until we meet Dr. Connors in the flesh and he explains he's a scientist who wants to make the world a better place. A world without weakness and he asks the interns anyone care to venture a guess just how? And Pete says Cross species genetics. Then looking at Gwen's reaction, her face, you can just tell she's like, Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. As she's looking at the names list, like, this motherfucker ain't supposed to be here. And then obviously, you know, she confronts him about it. Pete's like, Oh, I, I was going to say I work here, but you work here. So, you know, I don't work here. <laughs> and it's all awkward and shit. Gwen thinks he's being a stalker at first. This is kind of crazy, like, coincidence scenario, but I feel like it was supposed to come off as fate, especially considering what happens in Tasm 2. But, you know, we'll get to that when we get to that. Fast forward, skipping some unnecessary stuff, in my opinion, at least for the most part. Pete follows this guy who looks important because he has a similar Oscorp file to the one his dad kept in his bag. Ends up in a room full of spiders, which he's brave for because as Spider-Man fans, you either hate or love IRL spiders. Me personally, I hate IRL spiders. So yeah, let me know which one you are in the comments. But holy fuck, a bunch of spiders are falling all over him. <laughs> Bruh, I'd be terrified. And he walks out with a spider on him, of course. Meanwhile, we learn that Norman Osborn is dying, and Kurt Connors is responsible for figuring out a way to help Norman, but also as well help himself in trying to get his arm. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but of course, he specializes in reptiles and shit like that. Now, this is where shit gets real awkward because Gwen catches Pete lacking. She told him, You better stay with the group because I'm in charge of this bitch. And she finds he's clearly not with the group. So she's like, Yep, give me the badge. You're done. 
gear down. Buddy, and this is where the spider decides to bite him on the back of his neck, which happens 22 minutes in the film. So I mean, not that bad, but I will say Raimi had the villain and hero set up within 20 minutes. So, you know, that is one of the major downfalls of this film is the pacing up until you become Spider-Man. Also though, I'm surprised he didn't check it immediately, the spider bite. This guy really just didn't check that shit until he got home, I think. But what's weird is like the next scene, that weird edited train scene where just a, like a, a ridiculous amount of shit happens so quickly where Pete is just sleeping on the train. Some asshole puts a beer bottle on his head to balance it. It's showing his spider sense kinda. And when the condensation of the Beer, it hits Peter. This kid just jumps onto the fucking roof of the train. What the fuck was that? And he's sticking there because, like, you know, fucking spider powers, but nobody knows that except for him. But he's like, what the fuck, bro? But when he did that, he spilled the beer on this woman and he, for some reason, touches her and the shirt is like sticking to his hand. Honestly, bro, I think Peter is just like me, a socially awkward, weird kid because he genuinely didn't mean for any of that to happen to get beer on her shirt. So he was like, oh, yeah, my bad. I'm, I'm so sorry, touches her shirt, but can't let go because, you know, his spider powers. But that's just his luck, though. But that's not even it. Because, dear God, this shit turns left so fucking quick. He rips the woman's shirt off because she happens to be with the guy with the beer's girlfriend, I guess. So, like, he's pissed, tries to hurt Peter, but that doesn't go too well. And Pete ends up fucking up everybody in his way. But moving on, we then proceed to get what I consider one of the funniest scenes in a Spider-Man movie. Where he comes home and he obviously is, like, acting weird and different. And Aunt May and Uncle Ben obviously know something's up, but they don't know what. At first, they think, is this motherfucker smoking the ganja? Is he fucking drinking? Drinking? I don't think so. Because not only does Pete so naturally, casually, catches a fucking fly with his fucking index and thumb, he then proceeds to act like me when my mom catches me in the kitchen at 2 a.m. with the goddamn munchies. This is your meatloaf. This beats all other meatloafs. Something is very wrong. Nobody likes you, me. You're not! Bruh, look at this dude. I got it. But eventually, he gets to the bathroom and sees what was on his neck, and it's a dead spider. He realizes that bit him. Bro, this shit happened like an hour, a couple hours ago or something, and you're just now checking that shit? We then get a funny montage of his powers kicking in, and he just keeps fucking everything up because he's so strong now, he doesn't know how to control it. He doesn't really realize it. So then he carefully opens the door after fucking the entire bathroom up. I don't know about y'all, but I've heard over the years, some people do not like the PTSD aspect of these films, but I I thought it's cool it's relatable do i have ptsd i don't think so but it's something relatable for like a decent amount of people so i think that's a nice touch plus i thought this spider crawling scene or whatever this ptsd kind of thing looks cool we see peter figuring out the decay rate algorithm on his roof or whatever from his dad's bag and forwarding the plot skipping a lot of shit we have peter going to see dr connor's he tells him he's richard parker's son at first connor's just thought it was just that kid from the internship so he was about to tell him skedaddle you know you can see me at the office or whatever but when pete said that he's richard parker's son everything changed so he invites him in they talk pete gives connor's this decay rate equation thing obviously later connor's becomes lizard from this but i think pete kind of just did this as like maybe oh i came here to talk about my father but also like here i'll help you out with this as well afterwards pete goes to school and flash as per usual is being a dick so pete decides you know what we're gonna fuck around and find out today because Pete uses his powers to humiliate Flash, but in the funniest fucking way possible. Like, this man is dead ass, a straight up troll. In my humble opinion, Flash is way better and more character accurate in these films compared to Raimi and Tom's films, which is nice because I love this Flash. Like, Raimi's Flash is alright, Tom's Flash, eh, I don't really like him that much. He's kind of, he, he's a dick, but he's like overly too much of a dick, if that makes sense. Anyway though, back to this amazing scene. That being said, Pete is using his sticky hands to hold the ball when necessary but he again like he's just trolling the fuck out of flash in front of everybody gotcha bitch Stupid. Flash obviously can't grab the ball and Flash is finally like, all right, bro, come on, let's go. He then proceeds to get tackled and dunked on by Pete breaking the glass of the rim. 
that shit is fucking crazy but now on a more serious note i don't know if people realize this we're about to get into like the responsibility aspect of this peter story but i've come to a revelation if you will of this peter when i watched this movie in theaters recently and that revelation is that essentially in these films it's more choice and responsibility rather than great power great responsibility what do you mean by that scarlet you may be asking well ben tells pete since you decided to humiliate flash that caused me to come down here and change my shift because you know the principal called me in so that means you have to pick up aunt may tonight at 9 p.m ben tells pete and keep this in mind because like we're gonna tie this into everything later on like this is important for later but ben is an op loki because he sees gwen and is like oh yeah he's got you on his computer He's got you on his computer. Like, bro, what? You just made him to be out a creepy ass man. But of course, this leads to Gwen and Pete interacting. And like, bro, just get a fucking room already. The tension is in the air. Holy fuck. Just kiss already. Oh, man, you don't have me on your computer. I took a photo of the debate team and you're in the debate team, so. Right. So he must have seen I was touching up stuff. Touching up stuff. Come on. Get him out of here. Point him to the door. I'm not going to answer that. See what? Me. but oh my god like they're just so cute gwen voice cracks and the faces they're making towards each other the body language it's all just chef's kiss like this is the best written spider-man love interest ever in my opinion i'm pretty sure andrew and emma were dating at the time irl so that probably helped but still this level of chemistry is insane no other spider-man film has captured this level of chemistry between peter and the love interest i love gwen in these movies emma stone is to die for but yeah we get a cool skate scene of him also using his powers and stuff like that uh we also get a scene of pete and connor's working on the formula for regeneration growth or whatever right but ben calls pete pete decides to ignore it again he's making a conscious choice when he has a responsibility he's not choosing to use his powers for a selfish reason in this specific instance with denying ben's call like he did with flash but again in this specific instance i guess it's more he chose science over his aunt or maybe he just genuinely forgot forgot about his aunt may and just seeing ben calling and like oh he can wait or whatever they give a mouse this formula that peter came up with and that's going to come back into the pot later but pete gets home and ben is pissed at the pub at peter obviously because aunt may had to walk home alone in the dark and ben tells pete you know you're a lot like your father which is a good thing but but your father lived by a philosophy. He believed that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. Not choice, responsibility. And Pete kind of understandably goes, It's all well and good, so where is he? Where's my dad? He didn't think it was his responsibility to be here to tell me this himself. Oh, come on, how dare you? How dare I? How dare you? And like, that shit low-key hit hard, because it's like, god damn, like, you right, Peter, but... <laughs> you you play it with fire bro holy shit and then pete storms off accidentally breaks the glass to the door when this happened i was i was tingling i was like holy oh damn like my, my hair is standing up like this shit tense as fuck now back to that revelation i had when watching this movie in theaters in 2024 this revelation was that the one choice peter made to humiliate flash ultimately ended up in uncle ben dying because he used his powers irresponsibly humiliating flash causing ben to get off work then on top of it pete chose to ignore ben's call which led to of course aunt may walking home alone to then the argument between ben and pete which of course then leads to peter going to the store to buy some chalky milk and the guy behind him robbed the store clerk pete could have stopped and helped but the clerk was being a dick and wouldn't let pete get his milk because he didn't have like two cents or whatever pete making that choice to be petty led to uncle ben dying had he at least realized hey i got these powers i should use them responsibly and not humiliate flash not be a dick and stop this robber because it's the right thing to do uncle ben would not have died i think that the flash situation was kind of like uh hey wake up peter type of call you know what i mean and then uncle ben's death was like all right here's your lesson hope you learn from it but ultimately like i said a series of choices led to uncle ben dying rather than like one singular choice compared to like the raimi spider-man one honestly though i cried in the theater this shit was sad as fuck bro just seeing uncle ben die like this we continue to a scene of the cops at aunt may's house and pete gets a sketch of the guy blonde long hair with a star tattoo on his wrist he also listens to ben's voicemail but not the whole thing because you know he's too broken by his death he goes to school everybody's looking at him kind of a little 
little bit more than usual, I guess. And then eventually Flash comes to Pete trying to say sorry, but Pete assumes he's on bullshit. But Flash actually came to genuinely apologize, which is actually a nice character arc for Flash. It's not much, but it's a start to him becoming a better person. Look, your uncle died. I'm sorry. I get it. Which is like another reason why I really like this iteration of Flash. Then Gwen appears and hugs him and it like I, I cried here again bro. Cause like you can tell like she just really cares for him deeply. But Pete is just trying to be alone and walks off. Cause I don't know like it, it just be like that for us guys. You feel me? So now we get this montage where like essentially he plays around with his powers more. But he also is looking for the guy who killed Uncle Ben. To skip over a bunch of stuff. He gets inspiration for his costume he eventually makes from a wrestling poster. But for now his homemade costume costume is regular clothes with a red mask and sunglasses this isn't a very good homemade costume like there's better like the Remy one and the homecoming one but you know it's whatever now if i'm not mistaken he gets the webbing from oscorp but he creates the web shooter himself which shows how smart and capable he is so he goes and tests it out also this part was cool where he was standing with like both hands until he's just holding himself with two fingers that's like actually kind of insane we finally see captain stacy for the first time in the film where his his fellow officer is talking about a new vigilante as Pete webs up a bad guy in front of the precinct. Finally, 55 minutes into the movie, we get the costume reveal. He is Spider-Man. Now let's actually talk about the costume. So to be honest, I don't like it and here's why. Never mind the basketball texture, rubber, or whatever, right? Fuck that. I hate the eyes on this costume. I despise the eyes on this costume. Like I don't like the lens shape. Why are the outlines of the lenses blue? Why are the lens color itself? yellow or sometimes in the movie it looks black i don't know man it should have just been black outlined white lenses and then personally the logo is barely visible it should be a little more visible like make the lines thicker and if i'm not mistaken again the logo is blue why is it blue just make it black but yeah those are my thoughts on the costume everything else i don't really care that much like it's just a first costume or whatever for this iteration it's not terrible i just hate the eyes we then get this great scene of a car thief versus versus Spider-Man debuting in his new costume where Spider-Man trolls the absolute fuck out of this criminal. What are you? You a cop? You seriously think I'm a cop? Cop in a skin tight red and blue suit. You know, you're, 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 you got a mind of the true scholar, sir. Crouch! Is that a knife? Uh, is that okay. a real knife? Yes, it's a real knife. My weakness. It's small knife. Yeah. Anything but knife! Oh, it's so simple. What's a cop, man? No, drop it! Dude, that isn't funny. It is Come kind on, of funny. Pat. But he looks for the tattoo and realizes, oh shit, well, he doesn't have the tattoo. So, you know, I'll leave him for the cops. This is not the guy we're looking for. So now here comes one of like my major problems with this movie, right? After this scene, Pete never continues to find the guy that killed Ben, nor does he actually find the guy that killed Ben. You what? He told this last criminal, this could have gone a lot worse if you were who I'm looking for, essentially. If you was the ops, you was getting fucked up, gang. But I think they should have included a montage including this scene of him stopping different criminals but mainly looking for the specific type related to uncle ben's death because of something that happens later which i'll bring this up again when we get to that point in like a few minutes or something after this though he never finds the guy so to be honest to fix this it should have just been this guy in my opinion and the interaction definitely would have been different so here's what i think should have happened right we get a mini montage of spider-man stopping six criminals right three could be random random people black asian purple whatever <laughs> the other three could be the stereotype blonde long hair tattoo then to come to this car thief scene pretty much everything goes the same up until spider-man pulls his sleeve up the tattoo is there this is the guy who killed uncle ben now before i continue bear with me here i'm not a writer so if this isn't like the best possible thing or whatever you know cut me some slack but right peter sees the tattoo continues to beat the shit out of this guy almost killing him until the cop pulls up then pete realizes oh shit like i almost killed this guy i can't do that or whatever right hands the guy to the cops then the cop could be like who are you pull the gun the rest could kind of stay pretty much the same i don't think that would drastically change anything going forward or interfere with anything going forward too much plus this also could have kind of showed the cops like all right like he definitely could have killed that guy but he chose not to so maybe like make some of the cops be like to captain stacy hey, I mean, he didn't kill that guy. He could have. 
maybe he's not a bad guy or whatever you know and stacy could have been like but he's a vigilante and we don't want those on the streets whatever right i do like this part of the scene though where the cop is like who are you no one seems to grasp the concept of the mask <laughs> i just love the oozing sarcasm when he says that to the cop then spider-man gets away captain stacy is pissed 38 of new york's finest versus one guy in a unit tart. Am I correct? Pete comes home and this is a semi-important scene because Pete comes home banged up and shit from spider Manning, of course, and Aunt May is like, where do you go? Who does this to you? She's all emotional and shit and she's like, Secrets have a cost, they're not for free. Not now, not ever. That's a bar. And I feel like at this moment, she knows. If not now, by the end of the movie, she definitely 110% no doubt knows Pete is Spider-Man. There's no actual way. But I think it's never really said or implied directly. Because in the Raimi trilogy, it wasn't super obvious whether or not Aunt May knew, but I feel in this movie, she knows for sure. Moving on, we got this subplot, which kind of sets up the next movie a little bit, where we learn that Norman Osborn is dying. So one of his suits are having Connors create something to help Norman from dying and Connors I guess is thinking this lizard cross species shit will work but he's on a time crunch because the suit guy is going to use the formula on veterinarians at the hospital. Now we're about to do a little back and forth here but back to school Gwen invites Pete over for dinner where her mom is making Branzino which is fish. Back to Connors again we see him test the formula on himself then this fucker Pete just pulls up to Gwen's crib in the fire escape which is crazy because to her this motherfucker just climbed up 20 flights of stairs to get to her room rather than going to see her doorman and be invited into the home by mom or dad or whoever's home. So it kind of makes Pete seem like he put a lot of effort in to do that just to see her, but also on some like bad boy shit kind of. But he's just Spider-Man and she obviously doesn't know that yet. It kind of makes him seem mysterious too though and women like that. But now come into the riz of Pete and Gwen as he gets her flowers, but they're all fucked up, but she at least appreciates the gesture, which is good. W green flag Gwen and her dad walks in and it's awkward because it's like who the fuck is this guy in my daughter's room but he's like oh you're peter then this just crazy ass scene back to connor's he, he regrows his arm but Ugh. why is this shit so slimy and gross brother Ugh. he's heading to the bridge to catch up with the oscorp suit guy as he continues to transform his hand becomes a lizard hand back to the dinner scene with pete gwen and her family this shit is crazy because like first off he doesn't even know how to eat his brains you know bro it's struggling my brother in christ never even knew this shit existed like the stacy's are just in a different tax bracket compared to pete type shit then we got captain stacy talk about some oh yeah the spider guy he's he's nothing he's an amateur we'll get him because his uh son asked him if they caught him yet and pete defending the spider guy aka himself obviously like oh yeah he's just trying to help i saw that video of him in the car thief captain stacy's like if i wanted the car thief off the street i would have had him off the street and to be honest i like how pete in these movies acts like a smart ass because he dead ass replies to captain stacy like so why wasn't he then fuck you meanwhile gwen is nervously laughing like haha so funny pete shut the fuck up he's a cop he'll arrest your dumb ass eventually the conversation gets heated where pete is like hey i'm just saying maybe he's doing stuff the police can't and stacy goes off and says what do you think we can't do do you think we eat donuts all day and have our thumbs planted firm up our ass up your what dad i think he stands for what you stand for sir protecting innocent people from bad guys bro like come on like this this movie can be kind of funny sometimes okay so you know how i mentioned earlier they should have included a montage of him stopping different diverse criminals but also specific ones related to uncle ben's death captain stacy says somewhere in this dinner scene the spider guy is on a vendetta hunting down certain types of criminals and pete could have replied well no actually there's a video of him stopping a couple different criminals or something and maybe that could have been like a nice little edition or whatever but also that would have pissed captain stacy off even more because he's kind of like disproving his point i don't think i mentioned it yet but i find it kind of weird but also funny that they have people say things and then the conversation topic changes quickly because someone else says some shit and takes the stage essentially if that makes sense like this i have no idea first time george why don't you tell us about your day oh yeah dad did you catch that spider guy yet eventually pete and gwen go outside and this is another very cute scene where the chemistry between these two is fucking oozing bro i want a relationship like this but also like relationships are like this in the beginning generally speaking basically pete is just trying to say he's spider-man to gwen but it's not an easy thing to just out loud say to somebody until eventually gwen walks away because peter won't tell her what it is he wants to say so this motherfucker decides you know what we're gonna fucking web her 
hip, pulls her in hella smooth with this little spin and everything, starts making out with her. Like, this shit is just beautiful, bro. They made these scenes with Gwen and Pete so good, but goddamn, get a fucking room. Of course, the cliche parent walks in on them, but then Pete jumps off the edge after, like, she, like, walks away or whatever, because he hears police sirens, and this is where we get the first confrontation of Spider-Man versus the Lizard. I would talk about Lizard's design right now, but this first confrontation doesn't really have the best shots of him, so we're gonna wait for that. But this scene is very important because this is where Pete is actually in a situation where he saves lives for the first time throughout this movie, and this is where he realizes with great power comes great responsibility. We have several cars that were thrown off the bridge by Lizard that Spider-Man webbed up, but there's a kid trapped inside of one of them, so you know, Spider-Man has to go save him rather than to follow the Lizard. This car sets on fire and Pete doesn't give up, but he's in a crutch, so he needs the kid to climb up the car and he talks the kid through it, gives him his mask to make him feel strong, more confident to climb up the car. He really appeals to the kid's humanity to help him get out of this situation. Just talking about this makes my body like tingle. Like, like this shit gives me chills, bro. It did when I was watching it in theaters too. Then all of a sudden, the web holding the car breaks. Obviously though, Pete catches the kid and this is where I started crying again because bro, this scene is beautiful because the dad is like, thank God my son is okay. But he's like, who are you? And Pete is like, Spider-Man. I'm Spider-Man. And the score comes in. It's a great series of events. I told y'all the movie gets better after act one. Holy fuck, dude. Yo, it's kind of insane that this video is almost 29 minutes long. But honestly, from here on out, like we're gonna like skip through like a lot of shit. The next day, Captain Stacy holds a press conference regarding this bridge incident, but the cops don't exactly know what happened other than Spider-Man was there. They know that for a fact and that they want to arrest him, which Pete hears on TV. He gets up, walks away as that was said. And Aunt May is like, huh, that was weird. <laughs> like, bro, does she know? She fucking knows. Skipping a decent amount of stuff that isn't the most important. It's just really a flirty, but also kind of informational convo between Gwen and Pete regarding like how Pete got his powers, whether or not he should be going after that lizard monster. Also, he does this, which is crazy. But now after that, Pete goes to Connor's lab at Oscorp to see what's up with him because obviously he just seen a giant lizard attack happen last night and Connor's has been working with lizard DNA. Dr. Connor's leaves, but Pete sees afterwards the mouse they gave the formula to turned into this. Holy fuck, look at that unit. You want a piece of me, boy? and ate the other mouse. This is kind of gnarly, I can't lie. Like, what the fuck, bro? Afterwards, Pete tries to warn Captain Stacy, but he's not buying it. He thinks Pete is crazy. Bro said he should go with the mayor of Tokyo. That leads to him getting escorted out, which leads to Peter seeing lizards crawling into the sewers and as well a stack of newspaper ads for proof of giant lizard pics. Nice, smooth Daily Bugle setup. I think this lizard fight is cool. It starts off with Spider-Man making this giant web to see which tunnel the lizards are going in or whatever. At the same time, we see Dr. Connor is doing like video journals of his own human testing and shit like that. I gotta say, I really enjoy the aspect of this Spider-Man as far as like he does actual spider-like stuff. Like this giant web he connected through the tunnels. There's gonna be another great example of this in the next fight after this one. But yeah, we see Pete making the web, Connor's video journaling until eventually Peter fucks around and finds out. Lizard gets the drop on Spider-Man. Honestly, now thinking about it, this wasn't much of a fight. More like Spider-Man getting a decent look at what he's doing with and lizard clearly outmatching him currently that is anyway they do scrap a little and end up in the water which actually sucks for pete because lizards are fine underwater i think i mean lizard looks menacing right here swimming towards pete the second reason this also sucks for pete though is that pete's web shooters do not work underwater so that's great. So yeah, Pete escapes, but he fucked up because he left his camera with his name on it. And this is where Connors the Lizard learns Peter's identity as the Amazing Spider-Man. After the situation, Pete heads to Gwen's house for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because he thinks he might be dying and wants to see her or I don't know. But she starts patching him up. Not before though, her father tries to offer her hot chocolate, which turns into Gwen essentially saying she's a very moody teenager on her period for a lack of better words. I have the, I have cramps. I feel kind of pukey and just sort of, I don't know, like emotional, like I keep Good. crying. Good. It's brutal. You don't want to know, trust I, me, it's like... 
bad. Got it. And her dad's like, okay, yep, you're good. I don't need to know any more than that. Moving on though, Pete's trying to kiss up on Gwen, but she's like, no. I have the same feeling with my dad. Ever since I could remember, he's always put a badge on his chest, a gun on his hip, and I never know if he's gonna make it home. And it's weird, cause now her boyfriend just came home all scratched up from a giant fucking lizard monster. It's kind of a similar parallel. The men in her life are risking their lives every day and she doesn't know if they're gonna come home alive. And like, I like this scene. I think it adds some depth to Gwen's character. And I mean, I already loved her. Like this just makes her character even better for me. But Pete is owning up to his responsibility and is like i have to stop him because i accidentally created him he finally tells gwen then he's just trying to convince gwen let's get out of here go for a swing let's get out of here let's get out of here just for a minute can we i'm not crying you girl. oh my god they're so cute anyway back to connor's we get a scene of i guess the lizard brain talking to connor's or whatever now right i don't hate the lizard in this movie he was done okay i will say he's the lesser part of the movie but honestly they should have started this like lizard brain talking to him after the bridge fight they should have added a couple more scenes maybe of the split personality so to speak of connor's versus the lizard dna taking over if that makes sense but this is where connor's decides he's gonna try and take Take out spider-man peter parker for good because he has a plan and doesn't want spider-man getting in his way so connor's pulls up to midtown high fucking shit up and they fight so now let's talk about lizard's design we do get the lab coat like once or twice but it doesn't stay on for very long lizard just tends to take it off which kind of sucks but i guess honestly this lizard design is good minus the head so like to put it very simply they should have went with a completely different head design hold on y'all we gotta pause the review for a second this is in the middle of me editing this video right do y'all know what this motherfucker looks like for those 90s babies and or early 2000s babies like me y'all remember the dinosaurs tv show tell me not lizard looks like one of these motherfuckers i can't believe i just randomly fucking remembered this shit like this was literally my childhood but anyway back to my thoughts on this lizard design but i guess they wanted to do it like this probably because the lizard is talking but like bruh i don't know they could have just had a more lizard accurate head and had somebody else do lizard voice lines versus connor's voice lines kind of like how they had harry osborne voice actor and tony todd voice actor for venom and spider-man 2 also real quick i don't think i've mentioned it but holy fuck this movie Movie looks great the cinematography is good like the quality is just there it's it's great and it's even better in the next film but that's for the next film so yeah but connor's is talking to spider-man like yeah i'm trying to save people make the world better with no weakness spider-man just man shut your bitch ass up nigga god damn though this scene is fucking awesome though because right you got lizard lizarding and spider-man spidering you feel me lizards crawling on the ceiling peter's dodging bobbing weaving lizard attacks and this happens next which again Ugh. Brother, ugh. Disgusting. but again lizard is lizarding so this is cool but here is my favorite part of the scene lizard has pete pinned but gwen pulls up and smacks lizard with a trophy as if that was gonna do any damage but it did serve as a great distraction for pete to literally spider climb around this motherfucker to make a web cocoon this is fire as fuck no other spider-man has done some shit like this this is what i was talking about like andrew's spider-man is so good for stuff like this uh oh somebody's been a bad lizard the fight moves into the library and oh my god when stan lee showed up everyone clapped as they fucking should rest in peace my boy stan lee after this fight peter follows where connor's came from and finds his lab but before he does that he has gwen go to oscorp to cook up a cure for dr connor's pete finds the lab figures out connor's is planning to turn the whole city into ba -ba -ba lizards of course and meanwhile lizard has already begun his plan turning officers into lizards releasing a bio agent in cloud form i think he's downtown or some shit i don't know so pete calls gwen like abort get the fuck out of oscorp lizard is coming straight over there and as per typical rebel gwen in this movie she refuses and wants to help so she waits for the cure and evacuates the building in the meantime meanwhile cops are on pete's ass eventually they catch him until they pull his mask off he starts going ape shit on these cocksuckers that is until captain stacy has a clear shot on pete telling him to freeze and pete reveals himself to captain stacy and he's like what the fuck? You can just see it on his face. He's like, 
oh shit what the fuck and as pete is like gwen is at oscorp lizard's heading there right now you gotta let me go so that's what he does he lets him go but not before telling his trigger happy officer to hold fire and pete catches a legas again skipping some stuff lizard gets the device sets up shop while spider-man is trying to swing to oscorp but he's having trouble because obviously you know he has a fucking bullet in his leg and the news is broadcasting it guess who's watching though you'll never guess it the fucking guy the father of that son that spider-man saved on the bridge that's who's fucking watching duh who's a fucking w mans because he calls in a friend who works with cranes and these motherfuckers set up a fucking perfect sequence of cranes for spider-man to swing to get to where he has to go this is fire as fuck it's it's like a new york character arc thing which i i really enjoy and especially because it was that specific guy the father or whatever of that kid he saved on the bridge that just makes this even better captain stacy gets the cure from gwen as pete pulls up on lizard when he is setting up the device pete comes in with a badass swing kick this fight is pretty nice we get a kind of a good range of fight choreography mid-air battle then them kind of one-on-one -on -one flat ground peter being thrown off the building to fight from below while connor's kind of has the upper hand upper ground or whatever eventually lizard actually does get upper hand on peter this part is crazy because it's just lizard being an absolute fucking menace for no reason talk about some poor peter parker no mother holy no father what no uncle damn blood you ain't even have to go that far captain stacy comes in for the save and i guess they're using liquid nitrogen to kind of like freeze a lizard's body and shoot it to chip pieces off lizard then just starts to regrow his arm back he's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nigga. Like, yeah, buddy, this is exactly what I signed up for, head ass. Sadly, though, this is where Lizard actually punctures his claws through Captain Stacy, clean through, and takes them out, goes for Spider Man. Spider Man is, of course, able to just in time switch the toxic Lizard bioagent to the cure, and Connor's Lizard half begins to retract and decay. He's cured and goes to jail. Captain Stacy, though, sadly, did not make it. As much as Captain Stacy wasn't really character accurate, to how he usually is i think his character fit fine for this story and i mean i feel like maybe he shouldn't have died so soon but maybe like he should have instead been severely injured put in the hospital in a coma maybe or something for now i think that would have been much better but you know whatever i guess i know him dying kind of sets up the next movie but i don't know i kind of wish they didn't kill him so quickly because we could have had like maybe a decent spider-man cop relationship going which we haven't seen on the big screen yet so that would be cool to hopefully see someday but yeah captain stacy sadly dies but not before making peter promise to keep gwen out of the spider-man antics because he's gonna make enemies god forbid they find out who he is and who he cares about essentially so yeah again captain stacy died rest in peace eventually pete comes home and holy fuck like again there is no absolute like there's zero shot that aunt may does not know what pete is doing and who he is there, there's no fucking way like you cannot convince me otherwise we skip to uh captain stacy's funeral where everybody is there of course gwen peter was there but not with everybody he was like creeping crawling from above even flash was there the next day gwen confronts pete like what's up why why weren't you at the funeral peter my dad died you know everybody was there but the one person she wanted to be there the most for her because you know he has been there the whole movie for her and hey she rightfully pressing him obviously though she doesn't know yet that pete promised her father to stay away from her until after pete is saying he can't see her anymore and this sucks because it's like damn she she bad he kind of fumble it but he, he also he has a duty but like he wants her she wants him but he made a promise to a dead man and you got to keep a dead man's wish as long as you accept you anyway because it's the moral right thing to do again it's about choice and responsibility but at the same time it's not her dad's choice it's gwen and pete's choice mainly peter's choice though and again like this movie isn't necessarily about great power great responsibility there's some of that in here peter does learn that but it's more about choice and responsibility holy fuck finally end of the movie with peter coming late to class where he promises the teacher sorry miss ritter won't happen again i promise to where she replies don't make promises you can't keep mr parker and he whispers quietly behind gwen but those are the best ones as she smiles and this this right here is like when your girlfriend is pissed at you and then you crack a joke and she's trying so hard to not laugh like i'm talking like it's taking everything in her to not laugh because she doesn't want to give you the satisfaction of making her laugh because she's trying to stay mad at you because she's petty lastly we get a final dope ass swing scene again did i not say yet that this movie looks amazing this is 
is some fire shit. He catapults himself through a crane. That's fire. And we get this beautiful final shot. Honestly, there's so much good in this movie. Don't get me wrong. There's a couple things here and there where it's a little dreadful or rough. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, for example, the Connor stuff. He could have been a better villain, had a better head shape design, maybe a different lizard voice. Spider-Man's costume could have been a bit better. The first hour could have been improved at certain parts. There's like a lot of good scenes and there's good stuff here and there but i don't know maybe some certain segments are dragged out or could have been written a little better and or differently to help care a little more about dr connors i think they should have included him and his family because he usually has a wife and kid but they don't seem to exist in this universe i guess also as well if connor's family was included maybe there could have been a moment in time where connors was like do i want to turn my family into lizards though and the lizard brain is still trying to take over like that could have been an interesting aspect my last major flaw with this movie again pete should have found the guy who killed uncle ben and it should have been the car thief and it could have been a lesson for him that he can't do whatever he wants with his powers otherwise he pays the price overall though if you overlook past a couple of these problems this is honest to god a pretty solid spider-man movie with that being said i'm going to score the amazing spider-man starring andrew garfield a 7.5 out of 10 it's not better than spider-man 1 but it's right behind it i think i gave spider-man 1 a 9 out of 10 but i want to hear your score for the movie i want to hear your thoughts on whether or not you hate this film do you love this film and as well your thoughts on my review of the film with that being said i want to hear your opinion so make sure to comment down below so i can interact with you in the comments thank you for taking the time out every day to click on this video if you are new to the channel i usually try my best to cover confirmations rumors leaks regarding spider-man media and whatever else i happen to be interested in so if that's what you're interested in hit the subscribe button we're on the road to 6k don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and to check out my last upload at the top left hope you're having a good day hope you enjoyed the video until next time